all right hey folks welcome back to the channel glad to have you appreciate you watching today it's gonna be fun i've got this big ugly dug fur rolling up on the deck you can see it's got a little bit of a bend and it's a little too far down the deck for me so that's going to cause a little trouble rolling this log around and that's just kind of the way it goes sometimes that's okay we'll get it situated eventually but for now I, I, it's on the deck so I'm gonna have to get a position and start working it down now one of the things I want to mention is that when you're milling beans the best quality bean that you can make is FOHC that's free of heart center the next best bean that you can make is a boxed heart so in this log you're going to see that I'm going to both make a free of heart center and boxed heart bean or beans and if you follow along, you'll see kind of how I did that. Now, I'm going to run into a little trouble here and there. And I'm going to have to work past where that heart is. So you're going to see that I start milling. I get down to where I want to split the can. I'm going to split the can. And then I'm going to change my mind in how I'm working this down because of where that heart was. So well, let's let it roll for a bit. We'll get to that point. And then I'll talk to you about what I'm doing and why I'm doing it. And while I'm at it, I want to mention the roller tow boards a little bit too as well. If you're new to running a hydraulic sawmill or if you're just curious, one of the things that Woodmiser will tell you is not to leave the tow board rollers up when rolling a big log. You can see I have one up right there. That's really not ideal. Now, this isn't really the biggest log in the world, but I don't know if you noticed, I just dropped it right there. I realized this big guy here could slam down on the deck and you really don't want that happening with a tow board roller up you want to try to avoid that so even though i leave them up a lot to get the pith centered and start rolling logs around that's okay on smaller logs but when you get into bigger heavier logs you can damage your hydraulics if you leave them up of course in this case i didn't need it up anyway but you might see me raise or lower them at different times now i also use them to push logs down the deck You'll see some of that in this video too. So stick around. Let's get to it. Let's get this log milled down. And I'll come back to you and talk to you about what I did and why I did it in trying to produce free of heart center beans as well as some boxed heart beans. All right, we've got this one ready to go. Now, the one thing I'm going to do here that I don't, you don't see me do very often, is I'm going to just measure from an up to to the top of the log right there, just to make sure that I'm going to get my six inches. Now, a word of caution with doing that on that end of the log, the band can tend to chatter a little bit going into the log, so it might be a little bit thinner on that end than you would expect. So it's just kind of important to know that when you make that measurement. Now, I got that split. I've got a six by on one side and a bigger beam on the other side. I'm gonna work this down and get it to where I'm gonna be able to make my six by eights and six by sixes. And then I'm gonna flip it up and I'm gonna go to split it. But what you're gonna notice is that before I run it in and split it, I run the band right up to the log and I look at where the pith is. I did not want to split the pith and I would have had I kept going. So knowing that I decided discretion is the better part of valor. I'm going to kick this big beam off, work down the small one, get it out of the way. Then I can put the big one back up on the deck and start working it down. I wanted to build two six by sixes and two six by eight beams out of this log. And 
just knowing where the pith was, I decided it was easier to kick it off, get it out of my way, and mill out the small one, get it off the deck, and then we'll put the big one back up. So stand by, let's get it done. All right, so we've got a skim cut, taking a two by out, we're getting her down to where I can get some six bys out of it. I want to still try to get six by eight. I just have to watch where that heart is so that when I do this, I don't split it. I want to keep it in there as best I can. Since I wasn't going to get two out of this, I'm just going to work it down from one side, flip it, work it down from the other side and keep trying to put that heart as close to the center as I can. That's why you see me kind of flipping it around and taking some off and flipping it around and taking some off. We'll get this one done, get it off the deck, mill those flitches up and then get into the second log. So stick around, let's get her done. I'll come back to you and talk to you a little bit more here in just a few. <laughs> Carrying beans, six by six by eights, whatever, <laughs> they're always tough. It's hard work, folks. That's kind of green chain work on a sawmill, though. We just call it off bearing because we don't have any chains or rollers or anything else. As you can see, we're up in the mountains. All you got to do is look off to the right. You can see I got a V going down thousands of feet. Gorgeous location, folks. I love working up here. All right, next big log gets up on the deck. This one's a little bit nicer. It's a little straighter log, a little smaller in diameter, but it's a good sized log and it's pretty long. That's about an 18 footer right there. Nice log, it's gonna make some nice lumber. Maybe we'll get some beans out of this one too. So, you know, the usual, go in, center the pith, make sure it's as center as I can get it. And, and it's not really making it level, folks. I mean, some might think of it that way, but my mill's not really level. These wood miser single rail mills, they call them cantilever mills, they don't need to be level. You could have them kind of going uphill or downhill or on a bit of an angle left to right. Doesn't matter. As long as that long side rail is solid to the ground, and yes, you see it bounce around, but that's just because it's not bolted to the ground, <laughs> right? Big logs are going to make things bounce around. But as long as you've got it good and solid, what you want to make sure is that the pith is centered on both ends from the deck or from some of those bunks. So you'll see me using the deck, the side rail, the swing out bunks. It just depends on what's convenient at the time. Get that slab cut off, get that down, get some flitches out, roller 90, get another slab, get another flitches out. Let's keep going. Let's get this one knocked down.
Now those roller tow boards, they're awesome. And, and, and you'll notice I do this a lot. Lift the log up, move my swing out bunks, and either move the log or leave the log. But the reason those swing out bunks are not swung into place when I load the log is I don't want to damage the deck. My mill is seven years old. It's taken a lot of abuse, but I don't damage the deck because I keep those swing out bunks out of the way when I load logs. It does mean you gotta swing them back in later, but that's okay. Now, right there, I split this guy. You'll notice that I was about an inch off the pith. That is really not ideal. Ideally, you would capture that in one board if possible, but softwoods are forgiving. And I have found that, you know, most of the time you get away with that. I won't tell you, you do all the time. But this was a really kind of straight log. It had a little stress, but not very much. All logs tend to have a little stress in them, especially when they grow on the side of a mountain. Gravity just is going to do that to you. But we got it milled up, and I did kick one of those off. That was intentional. I went ahead, kicked it off, got it out of my way, split this one. And it, it's just kind of sometimes I'll do that. I just decide, you know what, I'm going to do one, let these guys get those two beams out of the way, then I'll put the other one up. And decide how I'm going to mill that. Am I going to split it? It's got some pith in it, so I kind of want to see where that is and make sure that if I'm going to split it into beams, I capture that pith in one of the beams. Ideally, what I'll do is actually kind of capture the pith in one and then cut it out. Um, it's going to give me a smaller beam in the end, but that's okay. So let's see what I do here. Let's watch and see what happens. So I don't know if you noticed, I kind of came in above the pit and then came back, drove her down and took a board out right there. So I'm going to keep that center, that heart, the pit in one piece of lumber. So it's not perfectly centered. That would be ideal, but at least it's in that one piece. If that piece kind of twists, warps, cups a little bit, it can either be edged down on a table saw or made into firewood, but it's just one piece, not a big beam not multiple pieces and that's okay so we get the flitches run up against those two boards we'll get them knocked down and get them off the deck and then get into that next log but that next log folks <laughs> that's going to be the next video and the next one's going to be fun i think you're going to want to see that one because i'm going to finish up the job and then roll out and i got to tell you rolling out of this location with this big camper on the truck pulling the sawmill it's an adventure all in its own so folks Thanks for watching. Do me a favor, hit that like button. If you're not a subscriber, hit subscribe. It's free and it really helps the channel out. I appreciate it. And you know what? Share this video for me. It really helps if YouTube sees that you're commenting, sharing, liking the video. They're going to spread it around a little more and let other folks see it. So I appreciate that a great deal. Y'all have a great weekend, folks. The old jar hit out.